One of the signature features of every entry in Hideo Kojima's Metal Gear Solid series is an original theme. In this video, we'll be exploring each song in turn with a focus on how it lyrically and musically matches the related game. Let's begin. The 1998's Metal Gear Solid featured the first of many collaborations with songwriter Rika Muranaka. The title theme that plays over the end credits and opens the game with a few of its bars is called The Best Is Yet To Come. Perhaps surprisingly for a game set in Alaska, the song is explicitly Irish. Sung in a Donegal style, it was actually recorded in Ireland too. Its arrangement features two staples of modern Celtic music, the low whistle and the flat-backed bazooki. Going off the official translation of the Celtic lyrics, The Best Is Yet To Come is about the common emotional thread connecting all of MGS1's major character arcs together. Each character gets confronted by memories of their past which they've tried to run from, wakes up from their self-imposed coma, and greets the dawning of a new day, where the best is yet to come. One of the clearest motifs connecting the song to both the story and the actual game is that of wind. We hear the raging Alaskan wind at the start, and one line begs, tell me we are not alone in this world fighting against the wind. The flurries of snow and wind in the actual game drive home this basic idea that the world is inherently a hostile and cold place but nonetheless that even love can bloom on a battlefield. This all works to further the underlying theme of taking charge of our lives regardless of whether we believe in destiny or free will and live our lives while we still can. For 2001's Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty and its title theme of Can't Say Goodbye to Yesterday, we find some thematic continuity with The Best Is Yet To Come. But instead of building on memories to find a way to embrace the openness of tomorrow, in Can't Say Goodbye to Yesterday, we discover a point of view that doesn't want to ever depart from nostalgia. The song begins, perhaps as a nod to the confusion at the end of the game by protagonist Raiden with someone who can't understand anything on their own. They're lost in a darkness, maybe as a sly nod to the in-game book written by Nastasha Romanenko, The Darkness of Shadow Moses. And the only way out of this darkness isn't to move forward, but backward, to a past when, at least in how it's remembered, everything seemed to make sense and the future was still bright and undefined. The song's about trying to return to a time when the present was still the future. It's about someone whose life hasn't worked out like a storybook or Hollywood ending, and so can only recover any joy and peace, or so they think, by returning to a time when today was still a tomorrow of the imagination. It's a gorgeous song played in a style we might call New York cinematic jazz, and sung by the wonderful Carla White. The song really makes you feel the glamour and melancholy of reminiscence and makes you imagine a version of a golden age Hollywood that never probably existed. In other words, it's absolutely perfect for MGS2. It's there that I'll find In a peace not war And dreams that I slip
2004's Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater keeps the lyrical continuity going by actually taking us way back in yesterday. Here, the darkness isn't joylessness, but a thrill. It's a darkness that drapes over us like camouflage. The song is about abandoning the security of morality and the known to obsessively pursue the thrill of the unknown. So it's a kind of hero worship, yet again a kind of fantasy for a future that hasn't been predefined. There's a sensuousness and gravitas to the song that makes it a real barn burner. Because ultimately, Snake Eater is about a passion, an unfulfilled longing or desire that transcends right or wrong, good and evil. And of course, much of the lyrics also double as a description of some of the activities that we'll actually take part in in playing the game. Someday you go through the rain And someday you feed on a tree frog It's so dear the trial to survive for the day Now, MGS4's vocal theme is actually a licensed non-original song that was specifically reworked for the game. It's called Here's to You by Joan Baez and Ennio Morricone, who recently passed away. And the original version would actually appear in 2014's Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes. So instead of talking about Here's to You, we'll jump instead to the two themes from the next game, 2010's Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Those are Love Deterrence and Heaven's Divide. Love Deterrence is in a very specific genre. It's a character image song. This is an anime and manga affiliated genre that conveys directly a character's personality or inner thoughts. Love Deterrence is written in the J-pop style, although there is a second version that's more of an acoustic ballad. The song continues many of the ideas found in the first three themes. Much like the perspective that we found in Can't Say Goodbye to Yesterday, the singer of Love Deterrence is looking for inner, not war, but peace. The character Paz has conflicted loyalties, and she's in a battle within her own heart. The title Love Deterrence conveys her hope that by pretending to be MSF's enemy, she'll be able to deter the explosion that is her true feelings pouring forth. Yet the confrontation that the song describes is also an expression of her deepest wish to no longer be alone. It's a touching song, particularly the acoustic guitar duo version. <laughs> Heaven's Divide, meanwhile, is the first MGS theme to be sung by Donna Burke. It's another epic, cinematic theme that actually plays over part of the game, like Snake Eater and instrumental selections of the other two themes. Heaven's Divide is a haunting song that, fittingly for the post-traumatic stress-stricken Big Boss, is about grief. The song makes nods to all three previous themes, mentioning wind, an escape into yesterday from today's old and shattered hearts, and even sacrificing my life not for honor, but for you. It's a very tragic song about Big Boss longing for death, yet realizing how his own fate has been set in stone. And this echoes, of course, the boss's last moments, and the way that she waited for the finality of that day. The most ominous line that directly foreshadows the events of the next game are, let me shine like the sun through the doubts and fear, do you feel the storm approach as the end draws near. When the wind changes course, when the stars The 
Finally, we have the unbelievably epic final vocal theme, Sins of the Father. Written by Ludwig Forsell, the song uses a vocal autotune effect at key points that really drive home the sci-fi hyperrealism of the Phantom Pain itself. It's a mournful, haunting song that feels somehow both ancient and futuristic, with its cinematic string swells and electronically processed sound. The song returns to many of the themes and images that we've seen before. We're in the deepest night, reaching out for a memory from way back in yesterday. But the central ideas of this song are mostly new, and they include torture, fire, hypocrisy, and religion. But the final line is truly the most haunting, as Donna Burke's grief-stricken voice exclaims, In my heart I just know that there's no way to light up the dark in his eyes. That is the ultimate, exquisite torture for the point of view that the song is narrating. A point of view that would rather reenact the sins of the father and suffer forever, burn forever, than accept that the father has actually died. Well, there you have it. Every MGS theme is important in its own way, and they're all to some extent interlinked. Until next time, boss. <laughs>